ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chop Tuck. I am your co host, Andre C. Right over here, it's the tricep princess herself. It's Melba. How you doing, Melba? <laughs> She's sore. Just so sore. I went back to the gym for the first time today after like an unwanted two week break, and I definitely overdid it on the cable machine. I definitely overworked my my triceps a bit. I'm having some weird muscle spasms that just kind of make me like look like I'm crazy and spastic. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. I did yoga for the first time today in a couple few years. Uh, yeah. So that's good. good. Got out with a buddy of mine and one of my childhood friends. We went and did some yoga. It was great. I, 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 like my, I'm, parts of me are feeling sore because parts of me stretch more than they usually do. So <laughs> that's yeah. fair. That's fair. Sounds much more relaxing than my three hour venture to the gym. Yeah. And, th and then I restarted playing Pokemon Shield. <laughs> That's what I've done. Pick up E. Oh, oh, and I had I drank alcohol today. <laughs> I sat out on the deck and drank and drank a drink. I had a drink and it was just just awesome afternoon. <laughs> That's just like a nice little thing to check off the lip there. Oh, so lip good. List. The so heck? good. So good. If that's any indication of how great I'm going to be with words today, we are in a lot of trouble. Words! <laughs> words! Stuff! Awesome. So we are we are here to talk some RCW, the Gladiator Cup Tournament. But before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to thank our partners over at Sunday's Main Event for, for simulcasting all of our Japanese wrestling content. Sunday Night's Main Event.com or Chop Tees. And if you want to support them, ChopTees.com slash SNME Radio to, to support them by buying their merch. I want to... I want to thank each and every, and I want to thank Backbreaker Video for simulcasting everything, and I just, I, I, I love them. Thank you, and OLE for being our partners. Thank you so much. And But mainly, I want to thank each and every one of you, because I appreciate all of y'all. We appreciate uh, all the support you give us, so thank you so very much. Please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and to all the, the new subscriptions we've been getting over this last little bit, we've been slowly growing. Thank you so much for joining in, and all those that have been subscribed since the beginning, and throughout, thank you so much. Uh, please comment down below. We love hearing from you guys. When you guys were at a show, um, we've been getting messages from people that are saying they've been at shows that we've been at. Please come see us. We would love to talk to you. We would. I would love to meet some of the people that, that have commented that have come to the shows. Please come say come say hello to me, and I'll introduce you to Mel because she's not great with people in real life. <laughs> no, no, she's a little socially <laughs> awkward. Yeah. So yeah, please. Uh, so yeah, please comment down below. We'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, please share us out to all your friends, family, and uh, crazy wild uh, fans in the streets tomorrow uh, in Edmonton. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Apparently, there'll be a lot of them. Oh, oh, geez, I'm like that's that's gonna be scary. Again, we're recording this on Sunday night, so it just comes out Monday. All the crazy fans that are gonna be running the streets tonight in in Oil Town. Share us out to all them. <laughs> if you're in oil, <laughs> and uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. Hello. Let's get into it. Let's talk some Gladiator Cup. Mm -hmm. And uh, this happened on Friday night, mm -hmm. featuring mm -hmm. guest ring announcer me. Mm -hmm. Me. Yeah, I, I may return for the first time in a few years to the ring announcing game to uh, jump in on this show because the regular ring announcer had tickets to a hockey game. <laughs> That's fair. That's totally fair. And then he did. And then he ended up at the lake watching the game. He didn't even go. <laughs> I, I mean, you know what? I mean, wrestling on the weekends is a lot. There's a lot of guys who wrestle every single weekend he does a lot of shows give mr lee a break mm. at least he did the one falls yeah i i did one i did it once <laughs> i did not intentionally disagree with you because i knew you'd be mad at me for it <laughs> what the fuck why are you always trying to just piss me off i was trying to piss off the whole crew Rude. 
Uh, uh, plus, I, 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 soy the boy. One, plus, I forgot on the first one that I was just like, eh, I'm just going to not do that for a while. <laughs> Sean. So we kick it off with the soy boy, son of Irish, taking on Steven Styles. This match was mm. short. Like, yeah. very short. Um, mm. So Co- Cody's avoiding Styles early. He's kicking him in the ass. But Styles hits him with this harsh clothesline. Uh, almost kind of like pretty hard clothesline there. Uh, Styles mm-hmm. with these repeated leg drops and then gets a two count. Mm-hmm. He gets him into the wheelbarrow position. Wheelbarrows him up for a suplex. But Soy Soyboy reverses into the IRA cutter for the mm-hmm. win. It, it was mm-hmm. only like three minutes i don't know i don't know i didn't we didn't know timers but it was short yeah it felt a little sudden but um yeah. <clears throat> we got a lot of uh pretty extended matches later in the show so i ain't mad about it especially when yeah. soy boy wrestled what one more time yeah main event yeah uh well again it's just the first round of the three round gladiator cup so after this match, you would think, oh, he's got two more matches if he's going to get it to the finals. We'll talk about mm-hmm. that. <laughs> you would oh, think. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything to really add to it. I was just enjoying myself. It was pretty short, so I don't really <laughs> recall a lot that, that kind of happened throughout this one. But, like, you know, I did enjoy it. I don't have anything bad to say about it, so that's good. Yeah. Again, it was a fine cup little match to kick the crowd off. And, you know. Just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we move on. We damn this to be as loud as possible just because there was an Oilers game that night. So, unfortunately, it was a little struggle with the turnout. There's, but... I think there's about 25 paid in the show, in, at the show. Yeah, but, you know, we yeah. had a good time. Everyone else oh, who was yeah. there had a really, really good time. There was a lot of crowd interaction because of the size of it, which I love. We, well, we, sort of. You, you brought a horde? We had a small horde. That worked. That worked. I was happy. Yeah, yeah. it was good. The crowd that was there enjoyed mm-hmm. enjoyed themselves, that's for sure. And, and, a guy, and a guy went home with 50 bucks from the 50-50 draw, so it's pretty good. Winning. Yeah. Ironic. The number, right? Yeah. So good. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we move on to the second match in the Gladiator Cup round one. Colton Kelly versus Rick Jules. Um, Jules mm-hmm. literally jumps off the apron attacking Colton Kelly uh, during his mm-hmm. entrance. They're fighting around ringside. They're in the ring. Colton like pulls the the shirt up over Jules and just cracks him in the chest. It was just like yeah. ow, just ow. Yeah. And then he gets his running, for- and then he gets his that running form in the corner. Uh, Jules gets a claymore, sending uh, Colt that that running kick, uh, the running straight kick, the claymore, mm-hmm. sending uh, Colton to the floor. Colt ends up like dropping on the apron face first, and then backdrops him on the apron. Um, yeah. The good like. Uh, good reversal out of the choke by Jules into that beautiful sit out jawbreaker in the ring. Looked really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Colton gets a beautiful sit out neck breaker for two at one point. They're trading shots, uh, and Colton gets a huge slap. But then Jules with that beautiful discus lariat of his, it just it looks so crisp, man. Um, yes. So. Uh, Jules gets the ten, was getting the ten punches in the corner, but Colton tries to power bomb him. But Jules grabs the ropes and takes them both to the outside. And mm-hmm. one, two, the ref counts. Jules is trying to get back in, but Colton grabs his leg, and Jules can't get back in in time. Mm-hmm. And they are counted out. And then they they start fighting again, and it literally has to be like they have to be separated. Colton's kind of almost running from Jules. I mean, at that point, wouldn't you be? You've already cost him the match. I mean, he's going to be livid with him. Um, and this is kind of like a continuation for me of the, the, that feud that's kind of going with Family Jules and, like, Team Steve and Colton. Well, maybe not so much Team Steve, but more Colton. Mm. Um, yeah, I like to see it because... It, it, we did kind of feel like there was like a, a finish of a, of something when Family Jewels kind of lost all of their gold in, in a one fill swoop. That felt a little weird. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, 
I I loved this. It was like a nice step into the next direction because we know Jules and Colton are going to have great match. Colton's one of our favorites um, at this company just overall. He These two wrestled a really, really great match. I think there was one point where like Jules was tossing Colton into the like the ring posts for us and everyone was saying one more time and they were actually listening to us instead mm-hmm. of ignoring us for the larger crowds which again I, I, the crowd interaction was great this night mm-hmm. we were very excited for this fun match fun match oh yeah um mm-hmm. yeah, yeah again i really enjoyed these two and then uh jules after the match saying it's not over and he's gonna he's gonna put him in a casket like he did to D- dangerous danny evans so We'll see. When did he say that? I missed that. Was he he just yelling it at the crowd? No, he he took took my microphone. I didn't hear it. Maybe I was too busy laughing because I had such a good time with the Horde that night. If I wasn't enjoying the wrestling, I was like making my face hurt. I was laughing so hard with this group of people. It was phenomenal. I just had a Mm -hmm. good night overall. Yeah. So yeah, again, I it, it was a fun night. Mm-hmm. We move on to my least favorite match in the first round, and not because and and Kyle Shaw did great. Um, again, he's been showing like he's doing better, but he was facing uh, Steve Not So Wild, or as I had to call him, legendary Steve Wild. The Steve Not So Wild. Um, I don't know. Uh, it. It, it was a match. I, I thought Goose was he's, he's doing good chain wrestling early on. And then, and so Wild says to Goose, he's like, you're pretty good for a fledgling Goose. And then Nathan yells at him, you're pretty good for a geriatric. And Wild just gave him this like look of like, fuck you. See, this is what I'm talking about. I was laughing so hard because we were just getting comments like that all night from Nathan, from Carly, from Alyssa. Like, I was just sitting there going at one point, my face hurts, guys. Stop. <laughs> like, yeah, good times. Yeah. Uh, um, Wild hits this knee, this knee to the gut at one point. I just, I don't, I don't know. Look. Um. Wild ends up running to do a Bronco Buster into the corner, crotches himself on the turnbuckle. Goose Mm -hmm. ends up slamming, picks, pulls him out, slams him, hits that cartwheel splash for two. Goose Mm -hmm. with the lariat, the arm drag, and the scoop slam for two. Hits a snap man, and Wild comes back with a snap man, and he hits the Charlotte Flair bow down to the queen for two. Uh, Goose fights back, uh, gets the DDT for two. Goose drags him to the corner, and he goes up, goes for the dive. But, uh, like, Wild starts rolling away. He barely catches him. Wild then grabs him, hits that uh, the uh, geriatric Snapdragon for the win. This poor guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I was I was not happy with the end of this match. And then came and sat with us after. I was like. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Why did he sit next to you? I, I, I felt so bad for you when I saw that. I was like, ha. Because I was sitting behind you guys. Because I was doing my ring announcer duties, so I was I was behind you guys, and it was just I was just like, oh god, she 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 hates this. I did, I did. Every wasn't moment. there a point? Wasn't there a point where he like pulled it, his like strap down, like rubbed his nipple at you or something? Are you guys? It was weird. I think when he pulled down the straps, though, at one point we were like, no, put them back up. Yeah. I started gagging. I think it's yeah. all in good fun, though. Um. Yeah. Okay. What do I say? Oh, I'm going to hate myself later. Okay. Hate yourself. This, the problem that I had with this match is that the chemistry just never connected. It never melded. Um, There's a definite speed difference between both of these guys. And it was a major problem kind of throughout it. And I hate to say it, but Steve Wilde was quicker than the Goose in this. And that, for me, is what ended up being a lot of the problem. He would be waiting for him, and Goose would still be coming along. And Goose is just, he's working his little ass off. He's trying to go. But, like, just Steve was 
he's just that much more experienced and he was a little bit more quick. Um, so yeah, for me, that was where the chemistry just wasn't kind of mixing there. I actually, again, I told you I'm going to hate myself later for this. Steve actually did really, really good in this match considering I felt no! that he held it for, I know I, I told you I'm going to no, hate myself I later. Did, I disagree with you completely. So that's, that's, the it, that's totally fair and totally, totally fair. But like for me, it again, I hate myself for saying it, but he did kind of hold this match together. And I hate it. It it also was my least favorite match on this show, though. Um, just because of that lack of chemistry. Everybody else seemed to kind of get it going and have something going or a story going or something. They just they did get that connection. But for some reason, I don't know if if there was, you know, just some kind of the mind wasn't fully in it or or what, but there was just there was just a missing. A missing piece in this one for me, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Why yeah. do you disagree? I have the exact opposite because I watch Goose and uh, yeah, well, he is slower. Everything he mm -hmm. did was salt was fairly solid, fairly crisp. Mm -hmm. What he was doing, everything I watched Steve Wild do was sloppy, and like the knees were bad. The I think the best spot he did personally to me in this match was slamming Goose's face in. The Snapdragon looked weak again. Everything just like seemed sloppy from him i mean normally i would agree with you because i'm not a big fan of steve wilde you know i hate him um but yeah it's see there was definitely something amiss when we both got something different out of it it's interesting yeah. again i hey. don't i i don't and I, i'll i'll say this steve wilde had a much better match in the th in the second round. Him and Cody, or him I and his opponent, opponent, was just. Let's get to that one. Yeah. So we'll talk. Let's talk about the next match, which which sets up uh, yes. the opponent, Dean Richter versus Cody Mack. Uh, yes. This was phenomenal. These mm -hmm. two were on fire. So I was in yes. the ring, ring announcing as Dean comes in, and as he got. Went to get in the got in the ring and pulled his hood down. This girl and her dad started laughing, and he said, like, "What are you laughing at?" And she goes, "We didn't know you were bald." I I I I started laughing bald. in the ring. Bald. I started laughing in the oh, that's ring. why you were laughing. I saw that. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't. St I started laughing, and you're just like, "What are you doing?" I literally just pointed at the little girl, and you're like, "I'm like," and I told you after. But, yeah. Oh yeah, that's God. funny. That's uh, funny. Uh, but D Dean, I love Dean on his entrances and how, like, he was yelling at the at the guys at the sound booth for for cutting his mm -hmm. music off early, and then they restarted. And he was yelling at them, he was yelling at you guys for cheering him. He was yelling at this little girl and her dad for for laughing at him because he was bald. It was just, it was, it yeah. was such good stuff, man. It was such good stuff. I mean, look at the the personality change that we've seen in Dean Richter over the last seven, eight months. He's gone from being someone who is very like lacking in charisma and interaction to to turning himself into a heel, whose interaction actually turns out to be more positive than negative for the crowd to the point where like we just cheer him because we know he hates it, mm. but we also cheer him because we like him as a wrestler but like we, we cheer him because he knows he hate we know he hates it like oh, yeah. he has become such a focal point of the show and such a fun person to interact with i mean and look at the last show he's fighting with a freaking kid so like yeah it's been yeah. great and a, like a privilege to kind of watch evolve and again, it, it's not like he's that outwardly like big charisma. He it it's mm -hmm. all that super dry, but it's it's a super dryness. But he's so mm -hmm. charismatic behind how dry he is, and it's just yes. a man being mad at the world. And it's mm -hmm. so engaging in a man being yes. mad at the world. I love it. Uh -huh. I, it's I very relatable, it. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at one point, uh, so the match gets started. They start going. Dean's choking uh, uh, Cody on the ropes in front of all, and he's like, "What are you, you being? You like being?" In, or he's like, he was yelling at you guys about being his. Figure uh, it out. Cody. Figure it out. He was yelling at you guys about uh, how do you like that? This Cody super fans or something. He was yelling at you guys because you guys were cheering for both yeah. of them. Yeah, uh, he was just like yelling at yeah. you guys. They ended up on the floor and. Uh, 
he he puts Cody on you and Alyssa and starts yeah. Kojima chopping the shit out of Cody Mack. <laughs> I mean, at least there was a buffer and I wasn't taking the chops. God damn. Yeah. I was uh, like, this I, was uh, not the bread club I wanted. And then Cody gets up and he unloads a couple chops to him. And then, mm -hmm. and Soy Boy's in the audience at this point. He showed up and yeah. was sitting in the audience of this, watching this match. It, mm -hmm. it, was, it was interesting. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dean ends up uh, making Alyssa stand up and says, Watch this. And he like takes her head and, or takes or not her head, uh, takes Cody Max head and slams it off the mat, trying to break his nose. I gave her so much shit for that because I'm like, I get that you're young, but you don't have to do everything men tell you to do. <laughs> like, you don't have to. You could say no. Just saying. Yeah. yeah. And what's he gonna uh, do? <laughs> some really good Cody reversing a German into his own uh, beautiful spot there. Cody gets these beautiful European uppercuts in the corner, and then it's that running knee to the mm -hmm. face in the ring for two. Um, Dean gets the. Dean hits his huge suplex, and Carly yells out, WCB won't cover that! And I, was just, I laughed so hard. Oh, I oh laughed my so God. hard. Oh, such a good night, man. My face was just in agony at the end of it, and I didn't even care. I had such a good time. Dean stomping uh, Cody in the corner, runs to the other other corner the opposite corner gets up on the turnbuckle poses then runs back across the ring hitting that beautiful hesitation drop kick uh yeah, yeah. uh dean starts throwing headbutts at one point um uh dean ends up going to the top rope for his flying head but like bumps his head on uh, uh, on the the thingy and actually he told him to look out for it and even Cody, when he came out for his entrance, he was slamming his uh, wrench on the post. He went to lift. Oh, he, yeah. He hit, the, he hit the light, too. Did you see the sparks come off of it? The first time he hit the wrench on the corner, there were sparks. Ooh. I was like, whoa. Freaking cool, though. Sweet. Good effect. Uh, he misses the flying headbutt, though. Uh Cody goes for a move, but then Dean reverses him, gets him up onto his shoulders for his the KOD. But then Cody gets off the shoulders and gets Dean Richter into a backslide, and Cody Mack gets the win. Yeah, it was interesting that little son in there with the backslide. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Um, I don't have a whole lot to add that that I don't like everything you said. I remember. Not anything else that I think I. I have to add to it again crowd interaction was just so fun mm. for the most part well again most and again, the chops and again with i think fine with these smaller crowds you can do that much more because mm -hmm. it's so much more engaging that way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well you could still do it with the larger crowds too it's just with the smaller crowds it's just a little more without being weird intimate right yeah 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 so, so the first round of the Gladiator Cup is over. Mm -hmm. uh, Son of Irish does get a bye to the finals due to Colton Kelly and Rick Jules getting double counted out. So Cody Mack will face mm -hmm. Steve Wilde in the second round. But mm -hmm. after, when we came back from intermission, we took a break from the Gladiator Cup. We return with the RCW International Tag Team Championship match. It is scheduled as the Barricades with Gussie or Weston King and Barricade. With Gussie Jones versus the Rads. Rads make their way out. Weston then makes his way out. Holding both tag team titles. Well. With the was he though or was Gussie? Oh, Gussie had both tag titles. Well, no. Weston mm -hmm. came out wearing them both. And then gave them to Gussie. That took, Gussie took them from him. Yeah, who then proceeded to drag them around the ring. Because they were so happy. They're the weight of the gold is so heavy. They're big bells. So they come I'm out. Not and, denying it. and I'm confused because I was expecting to ring announce the Bear Kings out, not just mm -hmm. Weston and Gussie. So they come out. Weston says Bear Case is not here. Um they said they're gonna this isn't gonna the match isn't gonna happen tonight. And I'm I look at Stu. Stu looks at Stu because Stu Garvey's in the ring with me at that point, refing. And uh, Stu looks at me and he's like no, this is happening, right? I'm like scheduled to. We're gonna. Have, we're supposed to have a match here, and the rads start 
goading at Gussie and calling him scared because he's too scared and saying Weston and Gus are too scared to face them as a tag team. And they goad Gussie into saying, fine, I will be his tag team partner. So I immediately yelled, and his tag team partner, Gussie Jones, to make it official. So <laughs> we get it gets to free bird rule with, with, with Bing swinging promotions, I guess, defending these tag titles. Cause it's for the belts. I mean, maybe. so we get Gussie Jones and Weston King versus the rads. Oh, you didn't see my graphic change. <laughs> He's not in the match anymore. You got to cross him out. You should have just put a barricade side in front of him. Oh, Opportunity missed. This is why you consult a mail ball. Damn it. Damn it. What the hell? Next time. Next no, I should have I should have put a pile on there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most of you won't get that joke, but she does. <laughs> That's what matters. Hey dude. So they the rad so Weston and Gussie go to the outside and the rads attack them on the floor. Uh Gus mm -hmm. uh I think Rich ran Gussie into Alyssa's foot. Uh, yeah. Nathan, Nathan's holding his foot up for for Ty and Ty to run King. To, so they're at the far side of the ring. So he he starts running, but oh no, the post gets in the way, and Weston King's face goes running into a post instead of Nathan's foot. Was that what happened? Oh my god, that was brilliant! It was so good. Yeah, because that was when Weston almost ended up in our laps, too. Oh, oh yeah. Dude, it was so good. I laughed so hard at that, man. This, this <laughs> ended up being an incredibly good match. Uh, Rich gets this yes. beautiful, beautiful school by roll through into a suplex on King for two. T.Y. hits a beautiful lion salt. Uh, Weston reverses the springboard Rana by T.Y. into this just rough-looking power bomb. Uh, Gussie comes in. Uh, starts stomping at Ty. Weston's choking him. Weston's choking uh, Ty while from the outside. While Gussie's in the ring distracting the ref, which is so weird. Hey, I mean they still kind of had the manager kind of wrestler relationship. You know, the manager distracts the ref. The re the wrestler does his thing. That's exactly what was happening. So, in my mind, Gussie's doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. Uh, so, T.Y. goes up to the top at one point, but uh, Weston attacks him, gets him into the muscle buster, but T.Y. slips out, uh, hits a kick, but Weston comes back with a huge spine buster for two. Mm -hmm. uh, Gussie misses a corner splash. Uh, but King comes in, takes out T.Y., gets a two count. Uh, T.Y. fights back. Weston hits his beautiful discus form, just crushing him. Mm -hmm. uh, T.Y. takes up Gussie in the apron, hits the apron, kick to Weston, but gets cut off up top. But T.Y. ends up knocking Weston King off the top, hits the eclipse, and gets the hot tag to Rich King. Rich King in, wrecking, wrecking Weston. But Weston uh, sends Rich to the apron. But Rich ends up hitting that sh shoulder to the gut and comes over the top with the final beat DDT. Beautiful move there. Uh, and then follows the suplex for two. Uh, yeah, so Gussie ends up pulling Weston off of Rich. Like, like it was a weird spot where Rich drop, ends up drop kicking Weston into Gussie. And. It's a tag, but if oh yeah yeah, and and Gussie like, yeah, no, too. and Gussie is adamantly saying I did not tag him, but he says it was a tag. So um, two I ends up dropping Weston, <laughs> um, and then they like they pull Gussie through the ropes to like slingshot spear him into Weston King. And then mm -hmm. Weston's taken out. Rich gets the Olympic slam to Gussie. T.Y. to the top. Hits the swanton. And the one, the two, and the three. And the Rads are your new RCW International Tag Team Champions. Yes. Yes. I really enjoyed the beginning of this match when they had them on the outside and they were doing like the shoe spots and everything because they were circling around the ring kind of doing all kinds of funny shit. At one point, I saw a picture that um, our friend Vicky had posted 
of like rich and gussy and like rich has like is like clown facing gussy's face or something i don't know what it's called is it fish lining fish hooking fish hooking fish hooking yeah fish hooking his lips and just be like hey i don't want to mess with the lipstick so like yeah <laughs> it looked ridiculous it, yeah it was exactly like that um was a lot of, this was a um kind of like a re-injection match because like the the first half was like a little a little rough um the tail end of the first half was great um this kind of reignited the crowd and got them excited um again which was good we needed that um yeah every, again crowd interaction was fantastic again the smaller venue or small, smaller crew i guess smaller crowd is what i was trying to say there um venues much larger um which gives me hope because if they keep going back and forth between these two legions there's a potential to start hitting different markets around edmonton so we can start to maybe start filling up that that kingsway one a little bit more because there's no reason given the quality of shows that we've had from rcw this year mm -hmm. that these places is that these legions should not be filled they've been putting on such great shows so i have hope i have uh, so much hope um but yeah this match was fracking fantastic we love ourselves the king he's got that razzle dazzle that he just gives us at the beginning of his match yeah Wes, rich, rich, rich king rich king did some great razzle dazzle tonight in the ring there, there when ring king got in yeah yeah they were doing the thing too see it's in contagious much like touching tips we touch tips yeah. again weston we love you these guys touch our tips they they touch mine when they got in the ring too <laughs> see to be touching weston wouldn't touch my tip so he wouldn't razzle dazzle you either no yeah this was a great match again i'm i'm sad that Weston loses his gold, um, but I'm happy that the Rads picked up this one because, like, as much as I love the Bear Kings, I don't know. I feel like Weston is kind of more destined for a singles title than a, a tag title. I feel like the King is the King and not, like, the King and King, you know? Like, there's King and someone. and No, it's not the King and someone. It's got to be the King. It's the king accompanied by his court jester. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Which, yeah, we'll go with it. Mm -hmm. Would that make sense, though? Because he's like, he's kind of doing an Elvis thing, isn't he? I know, but I'm, ju I'm, I'm just referring to old school. Okay. I know, it, but it, I'm saying, like, his, 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 I don't know, is Lisa Marie? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know either. Let's just move on. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. I got I'm trying to forget. Not yeah. Yet. So it, it's 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 what it's Weston King's Elvis to Gussie Jones corrupt Colonel Colonel Tom Parker, who was the manager of, of Elvis and took a lot of his money. I don't know. <laughs> he got he made that man got rich off of Elvis. Very rich off of Elvis. <laughs> Did you just insult the Gussie? No, the man is the, is very corrupt, and I respect him for it. It's a, it's a sign of respect. I respect how corrupt and dirty that Gussie is. The man lives in a van down by the river. I respect this man. Fair. Fair. <laughs> fair. Fair enough. I'm not going to argue nothing, that. Nothing I'll, but I'll... pure respect for the corruption of, 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 of Gussie Jones. Nothing but respect for the evil. Cool. I love it. Nothing but respect for, for what the, the bad that that man does. He's a straight up villain. Straight up villain. Oh, Gussie. We love some Gussie. <laughs> we do love Gussie. So we move on back to these. Oh, that's the, the champions again. We move hey. on. So I had to create the last two graphics because they weren't online because you don't really know that the second. So the one and only match of the second slash semifinal round of the Gladiator Cup is Steve Wilde versus Cody Mac. Um, they lock up at the start and Wilde's like, like, whoa, 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 saying Mac pulled his hair, even though Wilde has like a pretty much like 
he's got a little bit on top, but then everything around the side is like shaved super, super short. So it's like, I mean, where there's a will, there's a way. I don't know what he do. Bite him with his teeth. Oh, he's saying he was pulling his hair. Like you said, he's pulling my how? hair. Around. I don't, but I don't know how. And Nathan yells something about it. And he goes, and he, he said, you're one to talk. And he yelled, like essentially calling Nathan a bald, but it's like, no, he has a shit. Nathan shape. is bald. Yeah, but he keeps, and he keeps his hair, like this hair on the side, like me, shaved short. You can't pull yeah, that Yeah, but Nathan also hair. has a beard. Yeah. True. So arguably still more hair on his head than Steve Lopp. <laughs> Uh, Tell me I'm wrong. He has a very full beard. No, um, they're 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 fighting against the ropes again. Wild saying Cody's pulling at his trunks while they're while they're transitioning through holds. Uh, Cody starts working over the arms, dropping some knees into it. Wild then sending Cody to the floor. He pulls up he, and he they're on the outside, right in front of us, and he pulls tape out of his crotch. And like y'all, we we're all disgusted. Uh, and then starts choking Cody with it, and they both get counted out. So Stu's calling for a count out, but then uh, senior official Judge Ben Omen is not going to have uh, Son of Irish get a free championship here uh, for winning mm -hmm. winning the the final uh, by forfeit. Um, so he comes over, tells me we're restarting the match. So I announce the match has been restarted. So they get back in. Um, Wild spreads Max legs in the corner, like hook, like like spread eagle, like it's like spread eagle in the corner, and drops a headbutt to the groin, which just didn't look pleasant. You know what it reminded me of? NJPW, dick on dick contact. It's very similar. It's just he didn't. But with his head instead of his hand. And he just didn't. Ha he used the ropes to, to keep. To well, because yeah, he it. didn't have a Steve's of torture in his corner. He just had himself. I mean, well, he probably could have convinced Son of Irish to go in there, but well, uh, Tyrone and and Styles were we're sitting near ringside at, during this match. Oh, well, so they could have come in and held the legs. They could have pulled the house of torture there. That's true. Uh, they had a valet. The valet could have distracted the ref in that moment too. I mean, yeah. Yeah, so um, Cody Mack ends up fighting back. It's a beautiful mission, Oki Driver, but can only get two. Uh, Fisherman suplex by Cody Mack. Uh, he goes to the top, but Wild ends up pulling Stu um, in to take uh, the second yeah. rope leg drop uh, for him uh, from Cody Mack. Uh, and Wild hits this beautiful lariat to Mack, just, just rip it, almost ripping his head off. Um, this is where Wild's going to work, beating him up. And this is where uh, Son of Irish makes his way out to ringside. He gets Wild to hold Cody Mac. So Son of Irish goes to hit him with the stick, but Mac moves. He clocks Steve Wild with the stick. Mac sends Soy, Soy out to the floor, and he pins, he, he, he goes to pin Steve Wild. But the ref is still not there, so he runs over, pulls Stu over, pins Steve Wild for the win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting continuation of that feud kind of going on between Son of Irish and Cody Mack. I'm happy to see it expanded upon, um, especially now that Mack is back. He was absent a little bit after that jump at the last Kingway legion when he got his knee kind of buggered up uh i find it odd that the parish wasn't there because he was on the poster yeah and he wasn't there it like, would have made sense that even if he was being pulled from from wrestling for whatever reason it would have made sense to have him at least make an appearance because he's been absent from the last two edmonton shows and you know i mean this is the only story RCW kind of has going. And it's one I'm interested in because it's got a lot of people that I'm interested in. So it's like, why why are we just cutting this thing off? You guys, there's got to be a build with these stories and there's got to be a consistency with it. There's these amazing things called cellular devices. And they have this thing on there called a notes app where you can write shit down. 
and like hypothetically speaking, look back on it and just have the epiphany that you had something going on. Um, so like, could we start tracking all these stuff and all the stories and stuff and keep them making sense? If we're gonna remove someone from the company, just tell us, make up some bullshit. But like, don't just have this shit end. Cause this is something that you can build upon. Cause what else do we have going? What other story could you say? I mean, there might be something going on between Jules and Colton, but they're not sensationalizing it to the extent that they are with Son of Irish and Cody. So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of progress forward. I'd like to kind of maybe hear from Parrish, maybe on the matter. Yeah, we'll see. I, I'd like to know what's going on here because you know I'd like some clarity mm -hmm. to the issues. Yeah, yeah, especially because they actually set it up like really, really well at the, especially again at the last Kingsway show when they buggered up Max Nate to begin with. You know, Paris made a pretty impassioned promo there, and then you know followed it up with a tag team win with um, Son of Irish. The following week and then toodle -doo. yeah like, come on now whatever it is that's going on work it out and just please make the story make sense or just figure out a, a logical way to end it I, I because agree. but then but then what other story would we have like you need at least one or two stories consistently going for us to want to care if you're having a seven to eight match ish show right because like these guys are experienced enough this locker like this locker room th that they have right now is experienced enough that they can create something in the ring without there ever being anything there the rads and 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 gussie and weston i mean they have some history but they are very very good at that both at together and independently all, all four of them well all three of them i don't know about gussie but um yeah it I hope, I really hope that there's some kind of explanation as to what's kind of going on with that. But back to this match real quick. Uh, yeah, they, they don't have anything to add. Um, I felt that this was actually a really good match, kind of continued from the match before, the energy from the match before. And uh, it just kind of kept climbing from that into, to, into the next one, man. I don't have anything else to add. So, yeah. So... The pretty much the main event starts immediately because so everybody gets back mm -hmm. in the ring and jumps Cody Mag, and Ben mm -hmm. slides in and starts refing, starts the match. Um, mm -hmm. so everybody's <laughs> working over Max Knee in the ropes, he's doing those leg DDTs, just working the knee. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so it goes for a ro uh, schoolboy roll up, puts his legs up on the ropes, and Ben notices and just sh literally shoves Soyboy's legs off the rope. Oh, that was tremendous. That. Oh, yeah. I laughed so hard at that. I'm like, that's what you get, you little shit. So uh, Mac ends up co catching Cody going for a corner splash. It's, that be and a it's a beautiful follow a slam. Mac mm -hmm. takes his head off with this harsh lariat, but only gets two. So everybody hits and then come fought, fights back. Eventually gets a neck breaker for two. Again, he's working over that knee again. Stretching Sorry the knee. to interrupt. Do you have another graphic for this? Oh shit! I meant to click. I, I didn't mean to click. Yeah, I apologize. There we go. Is that better? There we go. Helping you do your job, sir. Yeah, I'm. I'm bad. Remember, I'm bad at my job. Just remember that. We're a tag team. This is what. This is why we're here. Um. Yeah. So. Uh, he, he, so he was working over the knee again. He hits a beautiful wheel kick. Uh. But he's like yelling at the crowd before he pins Max, so he only gets a two because he took too long to get the pin. Uh, so he's going with chops. Mac comes back with a hard chop. Uh, hits, starts hitting elbows, dropping so but hits a singer. He, Cody Mac hits the stinger splash in the corner, and then falls up with that running boot to the face for two. Uh, mm -hmm. so dodges a spear in, into the corner, like a spear coming at him in the corner. Gets a roll up with feet on the ropes. But Mac kicks out and he like kicks out with force, sending Soyboy up into the air and he lands on Ben, mm -hmm. which was like holy crap. So Ben's all just had the Soyboy crash down on top of him. He's uh, Kerf Lufford. He's Kerf Lufford, and I think he actually <laughs> hurt, hurt. He hurt. He hurt. He he he, he reaggravated. He ended up reaggravating like Soyboy landed hard on his ankle, uh, reaggravating mm -hmm. that damn ankle injury that he's had ever since MPW. Um, and uh, 
Thorbe ends up hitting a low blow while Ben is down. Rolls up Cody Mack. One, two, three. Son of Irish is your new Gladiator Cup winner. Beating a former Gladiator Cup winner in Cody Mack. Yeah. I mean, remember I mentioned to you, like, the three men together, Parrish, Cody, and, and Cody. Parish Cody and Son of Irish, they all kind of look like a generational group of, of each other. And, you know, that would make sense. The younger generation taking over from the uh, the elder. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That was a hard-fought battle. A terrible trophy. But I'm I'm proud of, of Son of Irish for coming through on this one and picking up a win. I wasn't happy in the moment because uh, kind of being God. a dick. Goddamn little jerk made me get in the ring and raise his hand and present him the trophy because Ben rolled out and hobbled to the back on his ankle. So he's like, get in here and present me the goddamn trophy. And I'm like, it's not my job. I'm supposed to give it to the ref to give to you. So I had to get in, give him the goddamn trophy. And he's like, raise my hand. I'm like, I'm thinking, it's not my goddamn job. I'm not a referee. So I raised his hand, the little goddamn jerk. But well, what a heel thing to do, though, I guess. Little what I seem jerk. You know, you gotta expect respect the heel drip, right? Because like this is he's kind of got a lot to brag about. He's been in this business a hot minute, and now he just picked up a win over one of RCW's champions because they have so many belts. Which one is it? RCW Alberta Heritage Championship. There we go. Yeah, the red one. Yeah, so he's he picked up a win not only against the former like last year's gladiator cup winner but also a current champion in rcw that's a lot to be proud of i mean he fought way more matches than you that night but it's still an impressive feat nonetheless um yeah yeah but he is being a little jerk isn't he Mm -hmm. being a great heel being a great heel and like it's better than having a bunch of mediocre heels, you know? It's a very much, he knows what he's going after. He knows what he wants to do. And he's kind of taken leaps and bounds to get there. It's just unfortunate that there's going to be a lot of victims on the way up to that top spot. But mm-hmm. this is the beginning of the evolution of Son of Irish. Curious to see where it goes from here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. going to be interesting. Maybe. But we have come to the end to it of an we have come to the end of another episode of Shop Talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's sad. <laughs> it's sad. It is, because this one was so fun. It was. It had its moments. It had its moments. And again, I'm very like we couldn't help it because it's a playoff game. It just sucks that not a lot of people saw this because it was a great show. Yeah, I really I really think there's some really good quality stuff on this show. Like the Rads yeah. winning the title. The Rads and getting to see Gussie Jones in a wrestling match was just grand. <laughs> Wait a second. The love of my life was on the poster too. Where the fizzity yuck was he? I saw him before the show, but then he left. I don't know. Maybe he just didn't really like again. Remember, he he skipped the top talent show. Just said, "I don't want to defend my title," and skipped out on the top talent and just went and went and filmed the he movie. Was on a, yeah, I was gonna say he was on a movie set though. He's probably getting paid more to make the movie than and he, he prob- is to wrestle a top talent. He had probably spent the whole day filming a movie and just came in to tell Squig, "No, nah, I'm not defending it. I'm tired from filming movies," and went home. I, I, I'm gonna assume he, Mitch Clark is a goddamn movie star. We we respect him. You respect him. I love him. Love of my life. Yeah. Fix the fingers. Come on. Damn it. There we go. Yeah. What the <laughs> fuck? But that being said, you can find me on on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, at that candy guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that candy dude. You can find me on Facebook at Andre Melball Talk Wrestling Talk. Or right here at youtube.com slash at Andre Melbourne Wrestling Talk or Backbreaker Video if you're watching us over there. Uh, you can find all of our Japanese wrestling content over at SundayNightsAmendment.com. You can support them by either going to Patreon.com slash SNME Radio, uh, supporting them for $4 American per month over there, or go to Chopped 
facebook.com go to the snme radio page and you can find and find all some really really cool merch over there and you can support them there you can also find me over on twitch.tv slash our local establishment uh you can find me uh, this upcoming wednesday night on uh, the 26th myself and old ed going to be reviewing going with the mc rebound on marvel talk we're gonna be talking Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. So ch- come check yeah. us out. Wednesday, 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern. Check us out talking that shoe right after, just after Dynamite. So we'll be yes. on there. And you can also find mine and Mel Ball's content over at youtube.com slash at Backbreaker Video. We can sign a lot of great content from Mike the Ref. And if you want to see him live, go over to twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay-per-views Sunday. He does AEW watch-alongs and every other day of the week, including the dates he does his AEW watch-alongs. He plays video games on there, so check him out if you want to see it. If you want to see replays of the gaming content, go to youtube.com slash backbreaker underscore gaming and you can find content from him mr pjc mr rick jules who we saw on this rcw show and there for a quick guest kayla j kayla j kayla j kayla j we love kayla j here mobile where can they find you if you're wanting to follow a Melba, you can find her on the X thing at Collins Melba. You can find her on everything else, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melba Collins. You can also find her on our local establishments programming Japanese wrestling update with this guy every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. And this is not. And then we will let you know on social media. This week is going to be a pre-recorded episode because we will be attending a wrestling show. I don't know what wrestling show I'm attending this week. It's going to really depend on on who kind of sells me on their shit. Guess we'll see. Guess we'll see. Um, I'll be pretty pissed if I choose not to go to LPW, though, and they bring in TJ Cannon. Mm. Mm. Decisions, decisions. RCW, make me decide that I want to go see you. Anyway. What, where was I? Oh, yeah. Japanese wrestling update. <laughs> they should be going uh, pre recorded on 8 p.m. Monday, or Friday, about time. You can also catch me on Astro Bazaar's YouTube channel. We, we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We are going to be recording an episode this week because I have demanded it. <laughs> and we will be putting it out whenever Astro decides to put it out because she commands it um stay tuned to our socials to see when that is going to be coming out it will be a pre-recorded episode we'll be going over a couple different things happening within the women's professional wrestling world so stay tuned to hear about that if you're wanting to attend an rcw show you can go to their facebook page real canadian wrestling where they will have a link to their event rate and you can purchase tickets online or you can get in the know with some of your favorite local wrestlers and they can get you tickets in advance with no service fees. Is that good? Was that a good delivery? Are we doing the top talent advertisement as well? Oh, yeah, sorry. If you're wanting to be a professional wrestler, a manager, or a referee, you can check out Top Talent's website there, www.toptalentwrestling.com. You can check out all they have to offer, see if it's within your sanity to give a try to. It's grueling, it's hard, but it's well worth it in the end. You can ask any of the guys who are currently doing it. They love it. You can talk to all of the refs who do it, like Mr. Ben. He loves it, even though he's hurting. Yeah, I think that's it. Andre, my trusted friend and colleague, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? I just want to say thank you all so very, very much for supporting us here. Whether it's Andre Melbourne Wrestling Talk, whether it's Backbreaker Video, thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, because we love hearing from you. We want to hear your opinions. Don't forget to share us. I'll tell your friends, family, and all, all your extended family out there. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. We are some crazy cupcakes over here. That being said, I am your Mel Ball. Over there is our drive. We will see you next time. Mwah.